What is up guys, welcome to Tech Savvy Buyer. So it has been a while since I put out a latest video, but hey, I got something cool for you guys out there that have not done this yet. So if you have a PlayStation Vita, in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how you can modify it so that you can put your own custom emulators on there. You can play homebrew games on it. You can expand the storage with a micro SD card so you don't have to use the proprietary expensive, super expensive memory cards for the Vita. And you'll also be able to play backups of your own games or do pretty much other custom things that you're interested in doing. It opens up a complete Pandora's box of opportunities opportunities and possibilities that you're able to do with your Vita. So there's a lot of cool tech under the Vita and it actually was really advanced for its time. But this video is not focusing on reviewing the actual Vita. Today, we're just gonna be modifying it. So pictured here, you guys can see I've got a OLED version and I've got the slim version. Now, depending on which one you have, you may need to have a memory card for the Vita to have this hack work. So the slim one already comes with built-in internal one gigabyte of memory, which means you will not need it for the slim model. But if you have the fat OLED model, you're gonna need to get a Vita memory card for this to work. Now, this is a complete noob guide. This is meant to be super beginner friendly and super user friendly for anyone out there. Even if you're a professional and been doing this for a while, this is a really easy way to do it. And it shouldn't take you more than a few minutes and you know just a little bit of patience of your time. But hey guys, I got your back and most likely you're gonna be just fine. Just follow through the tutorial as clear and as concise as you possibly can. So before we begin, we're gonna need a couple of things. So you're obviously gonna need to have a Vita. You're gonna have to have access to a working desktop, not a Mac. So this does not work for Mac, although I believe there are some users who may have done it in the past However, I don't use a Mac myself, so I don't have this instructions for Macs. Sorry guys out there who are waiting for Mac instructions. Unfortunately, it's still a little bit crazy. So aside from having a PC to work with, you're also gonna need the data transfer cable or the USB cable that came with your device obviously to hook it up to your computer. But before we begin, let's get a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by GVGmall.com. GVGmall carries a wide variety of game currencies and gift cards that you could use to take your gaming to the next level. If you're looking for a fresh copy of Windows or Microsoft Office, then you can certainly find those on GVGmall.com as well. They are priced very competitively and offer legit copies of Microsoft software. You can pick up a copy of Windows 10 Pro for under 15 bucks. Visit gvgmall.com for more information and use code TSB to save during checkout. Okay, step one, let's go ahead and jump over to our PC. We're gonna need to download a couple of files before we can begin modifying this Vita, and then I'll have you guys modded up and ready to go in no time. Okay guys, so first things first, we wanna make sure what our Vita firmware is. So for this tutorial, we're gonna be focusing on 3.73 specifically. Um, this does apply to any Vita that is 3.65 to 3.73 but I always like to do a fresh clean start and so it makes it a lot more easier that way. So right now you can see I'm running at 3.68. I'm going to go ahead and do a system update. You can see they're running 3.73. So we're gonna go ahead and do an update. We'll let this forward along and once it completes, we'll be right back. If you guys already have 3.73 installed, then you can just forward past all this. Okay, once we've installed, let's go ahead and verify that our firmware is 3.73. Go over to system and system information, and we have the latest firmware. Okay, so now let's go ahead and begin to get some files ready on our PC, then we'll be back over to the Vita when we're ready. Okay guys, let's move on to the next step. So you're gonna need a couple of files for the Vita to actually get modified, and we'll begin with the very first one, which is a PS Vita driver, QCMA. I have a link in the description below for this website so that you guys may copy and paste and follow along through this tutorial. Scroll down to the bottom of this page and click on Windows Installer. Once you do, it'll begin downloading the latest file, which is 0.41. Go ahead and click and begin the to follow the installation instructions. Since I already have this installed on my computer, I'm not going to go through with it, but you can pretty much see it is very straightforward to go ahead and install. Once we have that installed, the next file we're gonna download is Final HE. This can be retrieved from the link in the description below. Once you get to this page, all you guys gotta do is go over to the releases tab click on that and you want to download the version 1.92 this one is specific to support with 3.73 now all you have to do is click on this zip file here that you see and you're gonna to want to download that as well once this file is downloaded you want to open it and in case if you guys don't have a file to open this with you can go ahead and download WinRAR for absolutely free trial version 
visit rarlab.org and go ahead and download that so that you can extract. You basically need a file extractor application to do this. Once you gain access to the file, you're going to want to select all of them and click extract to. And we're going to create a new folder on our desktop. So I'm going to go into desktop. I have a folder called 2020 Vita Mod Guide. You guys can create a new folder, name it whatever you want. But keep all your stuff organized and clean together. That way it works flawlessly. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now you won't see that pop up there. It's because I already have the files in there. But just go ahead and extract all the files over there. Okay, so once we have this downloaded and once we have QCMA installed, we are now ready to hook up our Vita to our PC. So first thing what we're going to actually do before we go ahead and do that is we're going to run QCMA. I'm going to make sure that it's running in the back. Okay. And next step we're going to do is connect the Vita to the PC. Okay, so the next set of steps involves connecting your Vita to the computer, but just before you do that, we want to run the actual software that we just downloaded. So double click on finalhe.exe and make sure you have the trim-h encore enabled. Now at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in our Vita to our computer and hopefully it should detect your Vita up there. If it does not detect it right away, make sure you click on content manager and follow through the instructions to get copy content and essentially just make sure that you're connected. Now for all this to work, you need to make sure guys that you have an active PSN ID associated with the Vita, which means once you through the initial setup, just make sure you're using your credentials because it does access the server so that it can validate your system. It's not gonna cause any kinds of bans or any issues like that, so you guys have nothing to worry about that. But in case you are worried, create a dummy account and then follow through. But enough of the chit chat. So once we get to this screen, you can see your Vita has um, its home screen pretty much available like that. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click let's go on the application. Okay, once complete, you should see the following screen. And essentially, you're gonna follow the same instructions that are written here. So over on our Vita, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on copy content from the PS Vita system or the PC over to the PS Vita system. So we're gonna click on that. We're gonna click on apps, click on PS Vita, and you're gonna see H Encore 2 slide up there. Go ahead and click that, click on copy, press OK. Now, since my Vita already has one installed on there, it's still okay for us to go ahead and overwrite it. I'm gonna go ahead and overwrite it just in case. And now it should begin copying H Encore over to your Vita. Great, now we can go back, close out of this, disconnect from your computer. And as you guys can see, H Encore is installed. Go ahead and click on it, click start, follow the instructions with yes, and you should be presented with this screen. We guys are going to scroll down and click install Hinkaku. And we're also going to download Vita Shell. Great, once that is completed, go ahead and exit. And you'll see you also have Vita Shell next to your H Encore app. Now to verify that everything is working correctly, we're gonna go over to our settings. We're gonna see that we have Henkaku settings there available now, where the system update used to be. Go ahead and click on that and make sure you have PSN spoofing enabled, make sure you have unsafe homebrew enabled, and make sure you have version spoofing enabled as well. We want to change the spoofed version to 3.73. This basically tells Sony's network every time you connect to it that you are running firmware 3.73. So in case tomorrow if a new software comes out, 3.74 for example, you can enable the spoofing version to 3.74. That way you can still use remote play and all other network features of your Vita without being on the latest firmware. Now that we've done it, you guys are pretty much having modified Vita. This is exactly what it looks like. Now, all these other applications that you guys are seeing here are not part of today's video. 
I will be making a follow-up video on what each one of these things do and what is the value of having these type of apps on your phone. But as you can see, you can download a whole bunch of different games onto your Vita and essentially add a SD card to it and do a whole bunch of other cool stuff that make your Vita's life a lot more longer and a lot more valuable, basically. But guys, that's pretty much it. That's how you hack your Vita. And there you have it, guys. It's actually really easy to modify a Vita. It doesn't take too much time and you get access to a lot of stuff, like I said in the beginning of this video. So now with that, if you guys are interested in doing some more cool things because you actually have a modified Vita, such as adding an SD card in there or doing any of that, check out the description below. I have links to several of my videos where you can do certain cool things with it. And I'll also be uploading a more recent video with a pretty much massive list of all the different files and all the different apps that you can use with the Vita to get the most bang for buck out of your Vita at that point but if this was helpful guys go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you guys are new to my channel consider subscribing because it does help the channel grow if you want to take it a step further and support my channel i always have a patreon link in the description below for you guys to go and support the channel let me know if you guys have any kind of trouble with your vita problems i'll help out as much as i can in the comment section below or if you decide to support me on patreon you can reach out to me personally and i'll do a one-on-one -on -one session or you can mail me a vita and i'll do it that way as well i've done that several times in the past for several people if you have trouble with your Vita for whatever reason, you can always send it to me and I'll take care of it, send it back to you guys. Anyways, thank you very much for sticking through to the end of this video, guys. I hope it was helpful. As always, stay safe, stay smiling, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Take care.